afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Raylene Tenno. I am one of the hosts with Condo Insider. And we also have, I'm going to introduce today, one of our new hosts that's going to be also on our, um, we're going to be rotating on a cycle for Condo Insider, is uh, Nalan. She's an attorney. And she, um, she's an attorney with Hassert Kupchak and I forgot the last one. Um, but anyways, she is going to be also on our host. But today, because it's annual meetings, meeting season time, and um, we have probably some maybe new new board members that are going to be coming up, we wanted to do a show about being a board member. So I'm currently a board member on my condo board. So Nala is going to um, ask me a series of questions, and we're going to kind of get people a little bit familiar, familiarize themselves with what it takes to be a um, condo board. Aloha, everybody. My name is Nalan. I'm a practicing attorney with the law firm Damien Key Leon Kapchak Hastert. Such a pleasure to join this show, not only as a guest now, but also going to be one of the co hosts. So, today's topic we're going to talk about uh, for new directors. Uh, this is annual meeting seasons for condominium and community associations. Uh, first, uh, really, and I want to congratulate uh, the new directors who got elected to the board. Uh, your fellow homeowners did place a lot of trust in you. Uh, you will be having, you know, the duties and obligations to basically help all other homeowners to guard all your investment in this project. That's a lot of work. And uh, for somebody new, you may feel at a loss first. So hope today's session will give you some useful information. So Relaine, you've been sitting on your board association for a long time. Uh, for any new directors, I know usually right after the election, there's gonna be an organizational meeting among the board directors. Uh, at this time, uh, you know, officers will be usually decided among directors. Uh, so typically, in a condominium board, there's going to be president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, and then also directors. Can you tell our uh, audience, uh, you know, what those positions are and what are the typical duties uh, for each of them to be expected to serve in those uh, functions? So you, um, and typically your um, your condo should be operated just like a business. So you're going to have a president um, who kind of like is a CEO. Then you have the vice president. And you have a treasury, treasurer and a secretary, and then you have your directors. Um, in some boards, the treasurer and secretary might be the same person, um, mm -hmm. or they might have them as individuals. Um, and they have specific functions that spelled out in your condominium documents. So one of the first things you should always read, and you should, should um, it should have been available to you, and you should have, have already read it when you purchased, is your condominium documents your declarations and bylaws because they set up, they spill out certain requirements and the duties of each of those along with the duties and responsibilities of the condo board. So um, everything is, and also we have to comply with um, 514B and all those regulations. And that also has additional requirements for board duties and responsibilities like fiduciary duty, making sure you're not doing a conflict of interest, um, and, uh, and some other things, and especially how we have to do our reserves and um, do our budgeting um, assessments of uh, maintenance fees and how we calculate that. So um, you don't have to be an, uh, like a CPA, you know, to kind of do this, but you have to know the mechanics of it. Um, and you always want to consult an expert when you're not sure of how it, um, how it works, you know. And plus, to go to trainings. There's always trainings available. Yes, thank you so much. That's a lot of information, but don't feel daunting new directors because this is not a one person job. Remember, you're actually gonna be working along with your fellow directors with assistance from your managing agent. If you have a bigger project, probably there's also gonna be site managers in addition to property managers. And again, you have professionals in the industry that also help you, you know, those important persons include association attorneys, your insurance agent, you know, sometimes consultant, a certain bigger project like elevator modernization, or, you know, there's also, um, uh, you know, you have, you can form committees for board directors, you know, you have certain committees, uh, volunteer homeowners, 
uh, help the board uh, carry out some of the functions. But I want do want to emphasize, although you can delegate some of the authorities as a board to these committees or these professionals sometimes to a certain extent, but as a director and officer, you always have to remember, you cannot delegate your duties, obligations. Uh, ultimately, if these people who you delegated authority to, they somehow breach, uh, you know, the fiduciary duties, they didn't do what they're supposed to do, you may be ultimately held res responsible for those violations. So, um, I mean, as new directors, it always helps to know uh, what is the minimum standard you have to meet to avoid yourself getting into trouble. You know, we've read news about those horrible situations where directors uh, engage in serious violations and they even held personally liable. Nobody wants to be in that role because you are a volunteer homeowner trying to do the good for your community. Sometimes it is a lot of work. It's a very important job, but most of the time it's thankless, right? So, Rilan, so um, based on your prior experience, uh, are there any good tips uh, for new directors, you know, who are in that role, uh, you know, like, for example, for meetings, if they go to a board meeting, how does the association conduct its official business and what should a director do to prepare or to attend those meetings? Well, typically the property manager, they'll publish the note, well, they'll make sure everybody can attend. So they'll set the date that's amicable with everybody. And then there's what we call a board packet. Um, and traditionally now it's been emailed versus being mailed. So it could be up to the association um, to, to decide if they want, if it's okay, email or some people don't really are not, they don't have printers at home. So they might say, okay, certain people you need to send it by mail, but it would include the meeting minutes of the previous meeting, the meeting agenda, and then your financials. And then what other paperwork, like one of the things on the agenda might be to review a contract. So we'd have that contract in there, but it's also incumbent on us at least the night before, don't, you know, don't bring the packet to the meeting and you're opening it up. You know, you should open it up prior to and at least look through it. Look through the financials. It does take a little while to kind of read the financials if you're not used to it. Um, but, you know, you're allowed to ask questions, you know, um, regarding anything. Um, but especially if it has contracts in there, try to review them before the meeting. Um, get some post-its. And put little notes that you want to ask or you're not sure of that you need clarification on. Um, and um, you would start off that way. And the board as, as, a, as a whole needs to, be, um, needs to be a little kind in responding to some of these questions for especially new board members. You know, it could be something that they've been working on a, on a project in the past. And now, you know, they're reviewing contracts. And so this new board member might have questions. So just ask them, you know, answer the question nicely um, and um, so that this person can get caught up to speed as to what's going on. You know, um, that always, always is helping. You try to make yourself, your board to be as cohesive as possible. Um, but also as a board member, if you don't agree with something or something doesn't sit right with you or something doesn't sound right that you're not sure of, I mean, it's okay to say no. And to voice your opinion, um, I think it's more of a, a a wrong thing to do is just to follow the crowd. Okay, but you're, you you can voice your opinion. That's allowed. So don't think they're gonna get yelled at because you say no. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to make your independent business judgment as a director in your role. That's very true. I mean, yeah. So I guess for starter, you need to attend those board meetings because you know it. it it needs an official quorum, right? To in order for the association to do any official business. If a lot of the directors just do not show up at the meetings, that's going to be a huge problem for association operation. And some of the associations that I know they also adopt, uh, you know, board meeting rules like confidentiality rules, and those uh, written policies sometimes could be really helpful uh, to new directors because. Typically, in these kind of uh, director agreements, uh, they will spell out uh, those duties, uh, you know, like fiduciary duties. What what do those mean, you know, uh, for new directors and also remind uh, the, the directors on certain matters that's to be discussed at the board meeting. You you have to keep it confidential, either right. to preserve association's attorney client privilege or, you know, some sensitive personnel 
or fair debt collection, mandated confidential information. Uh, so those written policies are super helpful. I highly recommend for any associations with a lot of new directors, consider adopting one if you, there's no one in place yet. So that could be a really helpful tool to give information to uh, new directors. Talking right. about resources, uh, you know, besides of watching our program, mm -hmm. are there any other, uh, you know, accessible or useful uh, information resources available for any director who's willing to commit the time to educate themselves to be a more, uh, you know, capable, competent director? Well, in the um, 514B, you have, um, um, I think it's 107F that allows for um, associations to send their board members to educational um, seminars or trainings. And the registration fee is gonna be at the expense of the association. So both CI and um, HCCA, Hawaii Council, we both do education um, seminars. And we really cater them around for board members um, on teaching them certain, we, we do various topics and um, it's very worth it to attend these. Um, it's always got good topics. You don't have to attend every one of them, but we know if, you, if there's a topic that comes up, you know, it's worth it to attend, to learn about it. Also, both of us do um, board training, you know, um, and that's kind of, this year for Hawaii Council, we're gonna split it into two Saturdays because it is a lot of information in one day. So we decided this year to split it up into two Saturdays. And I think CAI also, there's, there's this called board leadership. And they also split theirs up into two Saturdays, I believe. But it's well worth to go through and attend. There's people that attend every year. And they always, I hear comments, they said, we attended last year, but I learned more than I did. I learned things that I don't remember from last year, you know? So it's always a good refresher. And I've always been taught that if you go to a training and at least if you come out the door remembering one thing, it was worth the effort, you know? So um, training is always very important. And remember, it's um, paid for at the expense of the association as long as you are a board member. Yeah. And also, I think the DCCA website, you know, they do have, uh, you know, some free uh, resources like a one page or two page flyers explaining to you what is the business judgment rule that protect the directors and what are the board's fiduciary duties. And they will also have sort of like a handbooks for directors, you know, all the condo terms and what you're supposed to know when you serve, start serving on this, uh, you know, those are some, you know, reading materials, but in case you need a reference to go to, you can always go to their website to pull the information. And for new directors, uh, CAI referred by Relayan is that's called Community Associations Institute. It's a national organization, but there's also Hawaii chapter. They organize educational events, and we also have a legislative action committee, you know, lobbying for community and condominium associations uh, in every legislative sessions uh, for any bills pertaining to condominium community um, projects. Uh, also, yeah. your condo, your condo attorneys, and your insurance agent. I mean, um, I know Susavio has attended board meetings and kind of give them a little, little bit of training, you mm -hmm. know, and even your attorneys, they might be, if you invite them in, they can attend, attend a meeting and you guys can sit there and ask him questions, you know, and he can also reiterate what you're supposed to be doing or whatever the issue is, you know, so they're always willing to be of assistance to any board because the bottom line is to prevent any kind of lawsuits or, you know, disruptions that could just disrupt everything, the board operations. Great. Uh, I guess, you know, unavoidably, because we've all been there, like in any, you know, kind of email project, when there are a lot of neighbors, uh, you know, there could be situations where conflicts arise. Uh, maybe, you know, disgruntled unit owners would approach, uh, you know, you as a director, and either make complaints or vent out. Uh, you may be also dealing with all these different uh, personalities. Sometimes you feel frustrated. How come, you know, I'm trying my best to do my job, but, uh, you know, I'm putting this position, dealing with all these emotions, sort of like emotional dream for myself. For any new directors, if they are, had, had that kind of feeling, what is your suggestion as an old director who has been, you know, been through that with a lot of experience? I kind of take, um, you know, like, like I'll take a weekend and just put, try to put it out of, out of your mind because eventually 
in a couple of days, something will, to me, something will come to your mind that can help you put at ease. And it, you might be able to see it from a different perspective that you weren't even looking at. So you can't be just fired up because you didn't like it. You need to take a step back and just go about your day. Like for me, sometimes it's cleaning house or going in the yard. <laughs> and then sometimes, well, you know, as I'm not really thinking about it, but something might pop up into my head. I'm like, oh, didn't think about that. Maybe it's that, you know? Um, so that's what I do. Um, I don't let it create a fire in my belly, you know? Um, or sometimes I'll take pen to paper and write down plus and minuses, you know? And then look at it. Because, um, you know, again, every decision, it, just because it didn't go your way doesn't mean that it's a bad decision, you know? So you have to weigh the, you have to really look at the other side of the fence as well. And what, you know, what are they trying to do? Is it creating this? Um, you know, you have to really look, you really have to analyze it on a, um, on not on a non-emotional level, I want to say. Yeah. So I think that's the hard part is you be professional, like treat this as a business, you know, like put your individual interests, emotions aside, emotions aside. Uh, I think as long as you are abide by the project documents, you know, always follow the golden rule, be transparent, be consistent, be fair. You know, I think uh, communication is always the key. It always helps. And then uh, as over time, you know, with, with your experience gaining, I think you will feel more comfortable in that role. Uh, and again, your fellow directors, your property managers, your condominium association attorneys, your insurance agents, all those professionals are there to help you. You are entitled to rely on them when you need information to function in your job. One other person we um, didn't mention is um, we need to follow Robert's Rules of Orders. Right. So um, on the Hawaii Parliamentarian website, there is, a, I think, a standard list of rules. Um, very user-friendly, easy to read. Um, so that's always another resource is um, the Hawaii Registered Parliamentary Association. I think it is, um, but they have a list of, of Robert, a simple list of Robert Rules of Order to follow for board members. Yeah. So um, we also need to, as a board member, um, you also when you're in a board meeting, it's open to every owner. Unless you're discussing discussing any kind of legal matters, employee matters, um, then that would be be done in what they call executive session. Okay, and board members need to realize, you know, don't try to use executive session as a means to make decisions that you don't want everybody to hear because you know they're going to bark at it. You know, um, it's it's about transparency with a few limitations regarding confidential matters, which would be employees and. Um, and maybe contracts might be another one. But um, owners, owners themselves do have um, knowledge. Like some of them could be painters or even roofers, you know, so they could in, do some input on um, like the quality of the material, like just painting alone. You know, when some people are picking colors of paint, paint, there's certain paints that fade faster than other colors, you know, so a painter could be helpful. Like, well, you may not want to do that blue because in two years it'll look like this, you know, and um, and let it let that door open for those kind of suggestions. I remember at a board meeting and it was about a painting and um, they had they had talked about this one color and one owner said I painted my house in that kind of a tone. And in two years, it, it looked totally different than we were going to just do a patch. They couldn't even do the patch because now the paint looked bad, you know. So um, sometimes we always recommend like select the wall and just put different colors, let it stay there for X amount of time and see how it changes over time, especially if you're facing the west side sun, because um, mm -hmm. that could really fade your color really fast, you know. So, um, you know, so, so sometimes these people that have other professions can put that insight into a board meeting that is a plus, you know. So. Don't close yourself off to having owner participation. You're not allowed to anyways. To oh, yeah. Off to owner participation. They're allowed to be there. Um, but now, what do you think about um, Zoom? Because, um, you know, we've been doing Zoom, doing it remotely for so long. 
but there are some people now that they want to come out of their shell. They want to go in person, but yet the condos are not doing it anymore. I mean, they're still doing it via Zoom, you know, and especially for some seniors, they're feeling closed off. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's where really every project needs to, depending on your situation, if like, let's say if you have directors who are not on this island, who are like remote, like on other islands or on the mainland, you know, you might still want to, even if you are going back to in person, you might still want to keep this Zoom option open for those directors, right. uh, you know, and also for owner participation, because the statue, uh, you know, give the owners the right to participate. And as you just mentioned, it, owner participation can be valuable for your project. Uh, you keep that option open, you're going to enhance owner participation, enhance transparency, and that will also prevent disputes uh, because, you know, the trust is built that way. When there's open communication, there's more transparency. Uh, but I totally understand, you know, if everything is conducted via Zoom, sometimes you do not have that team rapport when, you know, for any business, right, any team, uh, in-person communication is always different and superior compared with Zoom. And everybody's been doing so much over the past three years. And it's like, uh, it's a time to, if there is more opportunities to discuss in person, there's always this different vibe. Everybody's embracing for that as well. Yeah, because I think some people, even business-wise, I think some people are moving it more to what they call hybrid. So it could be in-person plus via Zoom. So that would cover that end. But it still is still leaves that door open. So now, so if you say, okay, we're not doing Zoom or we're only going to do in-person, you know, mm -hmm. you're restricting. You know, in today's world, we have to be a little bit um, flexible, I want to say, to owner participation as long as it's reasonable, you know, and, and it can be done. <laughs> yeah. Not like when I fly people over to off, blow off and have a meeting. <laughs> yeah, but one thing for sure is you cannot just uh, conduct association business via emails, right? That's wrong, right? Right? Because right? yeah, that's, that's big, a, no, no. Yeah, that's one twenty five a. You can't be having your discussions or de board decisions via email and then ratifying it. It's got to be done in a board meeting um, because one twenty five. The whole point of it is it it prevents um, owner participation, right? Um, on 125A. So um, try not to do that. And then plus two, the, the gossip that goes around when you make a decision via email, they're hiding something from us. <laughs> you know, and you don't want to do that. It's open transparency, you know? So you really don't want to make your decisions via email at all. It's not allowed, number one. And um, it just prevents the gossip that, and adding more drama than, than is really necessary to the board. Um, it just hampers the efforts of the board. Yeah, I think there's one uh, important matter we haven't touched. That's really the conflict of interest, right? Yeah. That goes into part of the duties and cares of duties as to fiduciary duties. So what is your experience on conflict of interest and what should a board director correctly handle that? I stay away from it with a nine foot pole. Like I, I told someone, I said, like I know contractors. I would never recommend a contractor to do work on my property, even though I, and I, and I tell them, I go, no, I go, because I, if something happens and maybe you did a great job, but somebody else says you didn't or something like that, I go, I don't want the finger pointed me. And, and, you know, I'm the one that recommended you. So I stay out of it. You know, I just don't recommend people. I really let it go out to bid the way it's supposed to and be totally independent, you know? Um, to me, that's that's the proper way. Um, and, and, you know, and don't get your family members involved. To me, that's a big no-no, you know, because if the project goes the other way and there's a lot of deficiencies or not being done right, now you've got additional drama in your life besides the board. Now you've got family drama, you know, um, and, and, it, and nobody needs that in their lives today, you know. So really stay out of that conflict of interest. Um, and be, and if it does, if, if, if that's the only resort that this is the only person that you can, you know, that can do this job, because there are some repairs that might be very, that only certain people can do. And then they have all the insurances in place, the bonding in place, things of that nature. You have to give full disclosure and you can't decide or make the decision or vote on that particular item, you know? Yeah. Advanced proper disclosure and then, you know, recuse yourself from voting whenever that's needed, that will protect you a long way, right? So um, we only have a few minutes left. I think there are some special uh, situations where boards should be aware because those are the 
you know, um, I, I want to see hot areas where people get into trouble, got sued, you know, recall complaints, or you could really got into trouble. The statute would see you breach your fiduciary duty if you violate those. One is on documents request from unit owners. Uh, the other is mediation arbitration request or demand from uh, unit owners. Uh, what are your experience on that? And what is your recommendation for new directors? Um, we, usually those requests for documents would go into the managing agent. Um, they might not necessarily go directly to the condo board, but the managing agents takes that responsibility and they have the, the, they have the duty to comply with those requests. Um, and um, just accommodate it. And hopefully the condo docs requests have gotten a little bit lesser because now they're posted either on the website or they're on town square or similar platform. Um, but if you do not comply, especially with filling out after 30, you have to respond within 30 days. And if you don't, or if you can't provide them, there's another form that they, the managing agent needs to complete as to why it can't be complied with. You know, um, don't ignore those requests for documents because now you've created another issue. Um, now you're going to have RICO on, on, your, on your backs to get those documents. And um, I've been told by RICO that whenever they get involved for requests for documents, they always get them. And I'm like, why couldn't they give it to them the first time around? You know? <laughs> um, you know, and also, like, you know how uh, some documents would be at a charge of a dollar per page. And that's dollar per, dollar per side. Like one person said they were having a hard time getting a copy of the house rules that the board wanted to charge them for a copy of the house rules. And I said, why would you charge them when you want them to come on? Give it for free, you know, don't make it so hard. Be reasonable people, you know, simple documents like the house rules. I would, I, I would freely give it out because I want them to comply with house rules, you know? So um, what, what other things do you think would be um, some additional? Uh, like assistant animal, right? They're not pets. I mean, that's one of the, yeah, I got a lot of inquiries from my clients all the time. And also, <laughs> you know, of course, uh, mediation, arbitration. If certain unit owner requests their statute obligation association needs to go in, when in doubt, consult with your association and counsel. Um, that's the whole purpose, the business judgment rules in place, where as a director, you don't have to do this job alone. You can rely on, you know, these professionals to help you make the right decision for your project. And we're running out of time. Uh, such a great pleasure to have this discussion. And we want to congratulate and thank all the directors who are willing to devote their time to serve their project. It's a noble job you're doing. And I think with all the help, you're able to do it. Thank right. you. Thank you. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.